Today at Computex 2025, AMD announced several new things, including the RX 9070 XT models, featuring 8 and 16 gigabytes. And in terms of price performance, they completely destroy Nvidia's offerings. But there were also some more announcements and some really interesting ones about FSR 4 and the new FSR codename Redstone, which brings a lot of several new things, and we'll get into it. But the point is, there are some things in the, in the announcement that some of you guys haven't noticed, and that's exactly why I'm making this video. But well, let's not forget that in terms of performance, the 9060 XT models completely obliterate the Nvidia's offerings if, and big if, the MSRP prices are real this time. Because we still have lots of 9070 and 9070 XT models that are way, way above the MSRP. Actually, most, most models are way above MSRP. There are some stores that still sell them at MSRP, and there are some stores in Europe that have decent prices, but usually the prices are way, way above MSRP. While we already have some NVIDIA offerings like the 5070 Ti, the 5070, the 5060 Ti, and now the 5060, that are really, really close to MSRP, and in most scenarios, really at MSRP, like 299. So it all comes to AMD to make sure that this happens. MSRP prices are real. And if they do, yes, the 9060 XT cards will completely wipe the floor with the 5060 Ti and the 5060 cards. Like today's sponsor will obliterate your need for Windows serial keys. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. But well, let's start with the announcement today at Computex, and we have, of course, gaming, AI, computers, and workstations, but we do have a lot of things about gaming. A AMD powers over 1 billion gaming devices worldwide. It seems that a Tesla is now a gaming device as well, and yeah, I know that you can play some games, but that's not the point. We start with AMD RDNA 4, and then we have, again, AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4, and by the way, they changed the logo now. They went back to the, to the previous logo that they have. This is the type of letters or font that they were using. And uh, with, with the older Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4 logo, they had this font that they have with RDNA 4. Now, we're gonna have, of course, still the same thing, but we now have FSR Redstone and here powered by machine learning. And it adds neural radiance caching, very important thing, we'll get into it. Machine learning ray regeneration, so instead of being ray reconstruction like Nvidia has, it is ray regeneration, I believe that AMD uh, wants to call it RR the same way that people um, that's that that people know that Nvidia RR is ray reconstruction, AMD RR is ray regeneration, but it's basically the same. And I believe that AMD is playing with the names ray regeneration and then machine learning frame generation. Now the radiance caching is very important, but in terms of machine learning ray regeneration, this is one of the things that AMD absolutely needed. If you go to Alan Wake 2, for example, when you enable path tracing, you need a very good denoiser. And the denoiser is what actually, uh, what actually takes away a lot of performance. And that's why in games that feature ray reconstruction and path tracing, NVIDIA usually performs much better. So if you have a way to enable ray reconstruction, or in this case, ray regeneration in Alan Wake 2 for the AMD cards, the performance with path tracing would be much better much higher because what costs a lot of performance is the inbuilt in-games denoiser. And now we have machine learning frame generation because even though FSR4 was updated, we have FSR4 in terms of upscaling. The upscaling was improved, but it was basically still using FSR frame generation, the, the older FSR frame generation. And now we have machine learning frame generation as well, which is very important. Path trace gaming is intensively complex, obviously, with low frame rates, plus high latency, plus high power consumption. And now we have an example of an original frame. Then we have, with FSR Redstone, we have the neural radiance caching, again, very, very important. 
continually, continually learns how light bounces in a scene to predict and store indirect lighting. We have kind of uh, the lighting being cached in order to have way, way higher performance. So again, it all comes to the noise or the cache and so on, but this is really, really important. And it means that in some scenarios, you will have higher quality and better performance because we now have the caching system, which is much, much faster than the usual one that, that we have. And look at this because we have a lot of noise in the original frame. And then with the neural radiance caching, the indirect lighting gets, um, gets cached. So it's kind of predicted in order to save performance or to increase performance, which is great. And as soon as we enable ray regeneration that uses a trained neural network to regenerate pixels that could not be accurately path traced, meaning that pixels that weren't working correctly with path tracing, now we have the ray regeneration in order to make them work correctly. For example, in situations where we have lots of noise in the picture, meaning that path tracing can't, uh, well, can't work correctly. We have ray regeneration to fix that. Again, predicts and filters grainy noise in real time, like ray reconstruction, nothing really new here. I gave you the example of Alan Wake 2, and if you have an NVIDIA card, just go inside the game, enable path tracing, but without ray reconstruction, and you'll see that the performance is really, really bad. As soon as you enable ray reconstruction, the performance increases a lot. It isn't the case in all scenarios, but in Alan Wake, in games like Alan Wake, the difference is really, really big. And the next step with FSR Redstone is super resolution, the super resolution that we already have, FSR 4, but I believe that in this case, uh, FSR 4 will continuously get, in, get improved, and maybe with FSR Redstone, we'll have the, the FSR 4.1 version. We are currently at the 4.0.1, maybe the 4.1 will be with uh, FSR Redstone super resolution, enhanced machine learning model to predict and reconstruct lower resolution frames to maximize performance performance, upscaled in real time, nothing new here. And then we have another thing with a frame generation and introduces a new machine learning model that uses temporal and spatial awareness to generate frames. I don't really know if the original frame generation, at least from AMD, uses temporal and spatial awar awareness because for example, upscaling, the previous upscalers that we had, or at least the, the first upscalers that we had with the LSS and FSR, they used spatial upscaling which in terms of upscaling wasn't that great and that's why they shifted to temporal upscaling and that was with FSR2 and the LSS2 and the quality was much vastly improved. Now it seems that with frame generation we have both temporal and spatial awareness at the same time and this most likely will, most likely will improve either performance or quality. And by the way, leave a comment in the comment section in case you know if the previous frame generation techniques already use both temporal and spatial awareness. Also, we have FSR 4 with over 60 game titles available by June 5th. And again, over 60 titles, um, yeah, I believe that as of now, it's May, let me see, it's May 21st. And as of now, we have like maybe, maybe 40 games maybe 40 games with FSR 4, uh, maybe not even that many, 30 games. I would say that 30 games we have with FSR 4. So I suppose that the next driver versions will bring lots and lots of new game support for FSR 4, which is great for people having the, the 9070 and the 9070 XT and great for people buying the 9060 XT that by the time they buy the car, they will already have over 60 games supported with FSR 4. As for the 9060 XT, we have the world's best graphics card under, under $350, according to AMD. We have 32 compute units, which I believe is still the same for the 6600 XT, 60, 6650 XT, 7600 and 7600 XT. So all those cards have 32 compute units, but since this is RDNA 4, the computer units do a much better job. And of course, we have a way higher boost. So. 3.1 gigahertz, I believe that we can push this up to 3.4 gigahertz, maybe. 16 gigabytes of video memory and $349. And you might say, well, $350 is not that great. Uh, and it definitely isn't that great if you're not looking at the competition. For example, the 5060 Ti 180 watts, 
supports or brings 8 gigabytes and has a 379 MSRP, while the 9060 XT, also 180 watts, brings 16 gigabytes of VRAM at $349, meaning that the card costs $30 less and brings double the VRAM from 8 to 16 gigabytes. And we saw that in several scenarios, 12 gigabytes is the absolute minimum. Not in all scenarios, but in most scenarios, it is definitely the absolute minimum 12 gigabytes. And having 16 gigabytes <coughs> will allow you to increase the textures, to play at higher resolutions without any kind of issues and to enable frame generation without having VRAM bottleneck issues. They aren't showing it here, but the card also supports 16 lanes of PCI Express 5. So instead of the previous lanes, the previous eight lanes that we have with the 6600 series, the 7600 series, the, um, the, 40, the 4060 series, the 5060 series, they only have eight lanes. Meaning that with the eight gigabytes model, as soon as you're running out of VRAM, the VRAM needs to refresh itself and it uses the bandwidth to refresh itself. And if you're using, for example, an, for example, an older CPU with only PCI Express 3, it means that you're going to have only eight lanes of PCI Express 3 because the lanes are physically cut. Meaning that the refreshing of the, of the VRAM won't be that great and you'll have lots of VRAM bottlenecking issues, textures not loading, and so on, so on, so on. Now we have a comparison from AMD with the 9060 XT versus the 5060 Ti at 1440p Ultra settings. And I mean, we don't really have the game's names here. I don't really know if that was the presentation because I wanted to make a live stream, but I was asleep. It was like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. here. So yeah, I wasn't going to to get up that early. But according to AMD, we have 6% faster gaming based on 40 games tested. And comparing the 5060 Ti 180 watts, 8 gigabytes, $379 MSRP versus the 9060 XT 180 watts, 16 gigabytes, double the VRAM at $30 less. And what is impressive it is that here you see rasterization with, um, with the 5060 Ti and we have like one game where it is slower than two games, let's call it that. And we have more games where it is quite faster, up to 30% faster. And I believe that if we overclock, we, we can get even more out of it. But what amazes me the most is the 1440p ultra ray tracing performance. We have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven titles where the ray tracing performance is much better with the 9060 XT compared to the 5060 Ti. And in terms of ray tracing, having AMD beating Nvidia, again, ray tracing, AMD beating Nvidia with more with a card that has double the VRAM, is usually better in rasterization, can be considerably better up to 62% according to AMD in ray tracing and costing $30 less. This is a major, major deal. And also according to AMD, if we compare the 16 gigabytes 9060 XT versus the 5060 Ti 8 gigabytes, we have 15% better gaming performance per dollar on an average of 40 games, which is great. And when I said that AMD completely killed the competition, or in this case Nvidia, with a lower end, I also meant the 299 model. And you might say, well, 299 for a card with 8 gigabytes, yes, but that's exactly what Nvidia is offering with the 5068 gigabytes. And they're already sold out in Newegg, for example, most of them. People are buying it, I don't really know why. Uh, but still, yeah, I mean, the 5060, 299, and the 9060 XT, even with 8 gigabytes, is 299. And remember, the, the difference in performance won't be that great in between 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes. The only games where you'll really notice the difference are those games that really, really need VRAM, a lot of VRAM or a lot of bandwidth. And in those games, you might notice a difference, but generally, the difference won't be that big per se, especially if you're using this card to play at 1080p. The difference won't be that big. And if the 9060 XT 16 gigabytes is faster than the 5060 Ti 8 gigabytes, it is also obviously faster than the 5060. And I'm pretty sure, like 100% sure, that the 9068 gigabytes will also be faster than the 5060 gigabytes, like considerably faster. So it's a win for the 16 gigabytes version, close to the same price, double the VRAM faster in rasterization and can be faster in retracing. And the same applies for the eight gigabytes model that will be way better than the 5060, I suppose, and at the same price. So yeah, that was a nice play, I guess.
And well, guys, that's all for this video. I just want to let you know about some things that I know. And by the way, one of the games that will most likely get FSR Redstone soon, and I wasn't actually expecting that, is Cyberpunk 2077. I saw Frank Kayser meeting, he posted a photo in X, meeting with, uh, with one of the representatives of CD Projekt, so maybe instead of having FSR 4, we'll have the next version of FSR already in Cyberpunk 2077, having ray regeneration and so on, and that would be very, very cool, especially in order to compare ray reconstruction to ray regeneration, path tracing performance and so on, that would be very cool. Thank you very much for watching, leave a comment in the comment section, and don't miss the next video that I'll release, which is about Rockham. AMD Rockham that is now released to Windows as well and more ecosystems. So many great things coming. Really, so many great things. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. And by the way, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these new features, these new cards and so on, so on, so on. Cheers.